Greetings to you, brothers and sisters in Christ. We want to thank the Lord for giving us another opportunity that we can um, study the Word of God. We are on Lesson 5, and our topic is Resurrections Before the Cross. Resurrections Before the Cross. Shall we pray? Our Father who art in heaven above, we want to thank you, Lord, in a special way for giving us opportunity to study from your word. May your presence be with us. May you guide us through the lesson. May we be blessed. May we, Heavenly Father, be drawn closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As I have mentioned before, that our topic is resurrections before the cross. What does that mean, resurrections before the cross? And we are actually talking about the people who were given life or who were resurrected, who were resurrected before Jesus died on the cross. There were some people who already were resurrected before Jesus died on the cross. And in this topic, we are going to look at, uh, of course, we are, we are studying on death, and we are saying, is death the end of the chapter? When someone dies, is that the end of the chapter? What happens when we die? What happens when we die? Is there resurrection? Is resurrection a reality? Is it really true that there is going to be resurrection? And is it true that they are people who are resurrected? You know, I just want to share with you something about um, my area of specialization. Of course, I teach business management. And in business management, we usually put emphasis on planning for the future of any business. We usually have goals. And in those goals, we teach people how to manage the business goals and how to manage the mission of the organization through people, of course. And in management, in a, and it is a strategic management question to say, how do you see your goal in the next five years to come or in the next 10 years to come? How do you see your organization? Where do you wish to be? And so this uh, other man asked, this young man, who was, you know, quite energetic and still growing up. And this man asked a strategic management question to the young man. He said, how do you see yourself in the next five years or in the next 10 years to come? And the young man, of course, with all the enthusiasm, answered and responded to the old man and said, you know, by after four years, I should have finished my, my first degree. And after the next two years, I should be done with my master's. And then the old man went on to say, and then what happens next? He said, well, after my master's, I still want to also pursue my doctorate. And the old man said, and then? And the young man said, after that, I will work. And the old man said, and then? And he said, after that? I am going to marry. And the old man said, and then? And the young man said, after marrying, I'll have children, of course, and send them to school. And he said, and then? And the young man said, well, I think I'll be old by then. And the old man said, and then? And he took some time to answer to respond to that question. And he said, well, I think I will die. And the question still is, is death the final chapter of our lives? Is death the final chapter of our lives? And this is what we are going to cover in our lesson study, lesson five. When we look at our memory verse, the memory verse actually is coming from John chapter 11, verse 25. And, and, and verse 26. And the memory verse says, I'm the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. 
In verse 26 says, Jesus then asked Martha, do you believe in this? And then Martha says, yes, Lord, I believe. So our memory text actually is, it's Jesus who is interacting with Martha. And as he's interacting with Martha, he tells Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. And when he says, I'm the resurrection and the life, someone said, this is the fourth I am by the Lord Jesus. To say, I am the vine, I am this, I am the bread of life. And Jesus says here, I am the resurrection and the life. And he goes on to say, he who believes in me will live. When you believe in Jesus, you will live. And he says, even though he dies, he's going to live again because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Even those who are alive and they believe in Jesus, they will never die. And then Jesus looks at Martha and says, do you believe? You can imagine what Jesus is saying. And the question is coming also to you and me today to say, do you believe? that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Do you believe that is the resurrection and the life and that when you die and you believe in him, you shall live. And those who are living and they believe in Jesus, they shall live forever. Do you believe? This is the question today on our lesson, on lesson five. The memory verse is centered on this verse to say on our memory verse. I wish everybody of you would actually, you know, memorize this verse which is given by Jesus himself speaking and saying I'm the resurrection and I'm the life and whoever believes in me though he dies he will live and those who are living when they believe in Jesus they will live again forever and this is Martha in this verse actually if I'm going to give you the background Martha here is in pain and he's even in pain and he's afraid, he's, he's, he's in a hopeless situation. And the hopeless situation is that he has just lost his brother, Lazarus. And Lazarus is gone, he is dead, he is buried. And Martha had even talked to, 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 I mean, to Jesus to send a word, a polite message, the one you love is, is sick. And Jesus sort of seemingly distances himself from the sick person. And after taking some distance, he now comes when the man is rotting four days after. And Martha says, I wish you were here. But Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. And whoever believes in me and though he dies, he shall live again. And he looks at Martha and says, do you believe? I don't know what I was going to say if I was Martha. I don't know what you were going to say if you were Martha. And Jesus says, do you believe? So we are going to actually look at the resurrections. And who are these people? You may want to know that the first person to be resurrected in the Bible is Moses. That Moses who was once hidden in the basket and then was chosen by God to lead the children of Israel. That Moses, he is the one whom we are talking about, that he resurrected. What happened to him? When we read in um, Deuteronomy chapter 34, we are given the whole scenario about Moses, how he died. He was 120 years old and people actually mourned for Moses, but nobody witnessed the grave as the gravesite where Moses was buried. God himself buried Moses. And in Jude chapter 1, verse 9, we find Jesus now resurrecting Moses. It's talking about uh, how the devil was contending on the body of Moses when Jesus was now coming in to resurrect to do his work of giving life to Moses. And when he was coming to, to give life to Moses, the devil was contending over the body of Moses. He is not contending over the spirit of Moses, but over the body of Moses. 
Why the body and not the spirit? We actually have people who think when people die, what happens to them? Some people think maybe the spirit is going to heaven and then the body remains. And when the spirit is, I mean, and some are thinking that maybe the spirit is in heaven or the spirit is gone or something like that. But here they are contending over the body of Moses. Why the body of Moses? You know, Satan here believed that he owned Moses' body and he was fighting for it. But he did not fight for the spirit or the soul, but for the physical transformed body of Moses. And what happens here? We find that Moses went to heaven as a body, not as a spirit. His body is what went to heaven, not the spirit of Moses. So this thing that we think, sometimes we think that when a person dies, the spirit has gone to heaven. I remember at one time when actually I was also mourning, I lost my husband, and when he died, some people were coming to me, come, trying to comfort me to say, don't mourn. Why? Because you are going to disturb his spirit. The spirit is going to heaven, so don't disturb the spirit that is going to heaven. But you should know that you should not mourn too much because you are going to disturb his spirit from going to heaven. But here, according to the Bible, we can see that the body of Mo Moses went to heaven as a body. And when Jesus was even resurrecting Moses, he did not say, the spirit of Moses come down so that you go back to heaven. You see that there's confusion there. So it's the body that goes to heaven, not like the spirit alone is going to heaven. There are all these sorts of beliefs, but the Bible is saying no to that. According to this story in the Bible, when Moses was resurrected, we actually have other resurrections in the Bible that took place before Jesus died on the cross. Actually, what we are learning from this, we can see that Jesus actually has power to give life to a dead body. He has power. The Bible is telling us that the resurrections are actually true. Because later on, Moses' body was seen when Jesus was glorified by the disciples. They witnessed Moses and Elijah when Jesus was transfigured. They saw that Moses' body was there walking, not just a spirit that is maybe flying all over and so forth. So this is what actually happened. There are other cases in the Old Testament of people who actually were resurrected. When we look at the miracle at Zarephath, this one we find it in Second uh, in First Kings seventeen verse nine, and and Second Kings four verse nine to ten. So this is what happened at Zarephath. The woman lost her son. And this woman is the one who had fed Elijah. You remember when Elijah was sent to Zarephath? Because the brook had dried up and there was no more water for him to drink and no food for him. He was sent to this woman at Zarephath. And when he went to the woman at Zarephath, he actually was fed by this woman. And later on, the woman lost a son and the woman was miserable but by faith she went to the man of God and said look at what has happened to my son and Elijah prayed for this for this young man who had died and he was resurrected that's another scenario of resurrection that took place before Jesus went on the cross and a similar one was this other rich woman um the Shunammite woman, who was actually taking care of Elisha. They gave Elisha a room to lodge, to stay in there, so that he could do his work. Whenever he could pass by, he had a place where he could stay there. And the, that, that lady was a rich woman. They could actually manage to build a, a room or maybe, yes, a house where they could house this uh, prophet who was going around to do God's work. And later on, she lost her son and she went to Elisha and said, this is what has happened to my son. And you know what happened? That woman, actually Elisha prayed for that son. 
and the son was resurrected, was given back to the woman. And you can tell that death here, there was death in a poor widow's house. There was death in the rich woman's house. Death does not, uh, does not select. Death can strike anywhere, to the rich and to the poor. But by faith, these women had to go to the prophets, to these men of God, and they were prayed, and they, and they prayed for the sons, and the sons were brought back to life. This is another scenario where we see resurrection taking place. Resurrections, and what we can tell is, resurrection is true. Resurrection is true. And we see again, in another scenario again, we find here the son of a widow, the widow of nine in the New Testament. And this time now, it's Jesus who is there in the New Testament. And he was going around everywhere doing good to people, healing the sick. He was healing the sick. He was actually, I mean, even commanding the, the, the demons to be out of the people who were possessed by demonic possessions. And he was doing everything. And at one time when he was moving, he was going to this village called Nine. And he actually encountered a group of people who were going out to bury a son of a widow who had died in that village. And when Jesus actually went, she, he actually confronted and went to this woman and told her, don't cry. And he actually spoke to this young man and, I said, and he said, I tell you, young man, get up. And this is recorded in Luke chapter 14. And the woman and this young man got up and the whole scenario changed because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And he said to Martha, do you believe this? And the question is also coming to us, do we believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? which is very, very important. And we discover again another scenario again of Jairus' daughter, who was also, who had also died. And Jesus went in to heal in this story. And he actually said, death is sleep. So whenever it comes to Jesus, to God, when we talk about death, Death is actually a form of sleep. Because why is it a form of sleep? Because, they are, because God is able to bring, to resurrect the dead. We should not be afraid of death when we are believers in Christ. We should know that death, to everyone who believes in Christ, death is sleep. Because we know that one day there's going to be resurrection. And God is powerful. He's a life giver. He can give life. He is the only one who can give life to the dead and make them live again. No one can do it. No one can reverse death except Jesus. All these scenarios are telling us that death is sleep. The time that we are afraid, this is the time that we need actually to approach and be able to remain holding on to God. When we see the last one that we are given here, it's actually the death of Lazarus that we started with. When Jesus actually asked Martha, when Lazarus had died at, in, in this uh, village called Bethany, and how Jesus came and called out Lazarus in the tomb. And he said, Lazarus, come out of the tomb. Jesus never said, Lazarus, come down from heaven. He never said, may your spirit come down from heaven. But he said, Lazarus, come out, because Lazarus was buried in the tomb. And, and this is what Jesus did. And he said to Mary and Martha, he actually said, this is when his fourth I am here comes into effect. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he, has, though he died, and he believes in Jesus, there's going to be resurrection. There's going to be resurrection. And resurrection is assured of us. What are we learning out of all these 
uh, resurrection scenarios that we are reading about before Jesus um, was resurrected. This is supposed to give us assurance that resurrection is real. That Jesus is going to come one day to deal with death. Death is not the final chapter of our lives, but resurrection is the final chapter of all those who believe. We need to hold on to Christ to make sure we are ready. We believe in Christ. Let's choose Christ because he's the one who holds the keys of death. He's the one who holds the keys of death. He knows how to unlock the place where the dead are. Let's rededicate our lives completely to God. Even those in our society sometimes would think maybe when somebody dies today, they are already in heaven or they are somewhere. Let's be assured that, yes, we are suffering. We have tears on our cheeks. Death has robbed us of many of our loved ones. But let's know that the persons who died are in the grave. But resurrection is going to be done one day when Jesus comes for the second time. What we need to learn out of it is that he who is the son is life. This is our takeaway. He who is the son is life. In other words, when Jesus said, do you believe in this mother? Let's say, yes, we believe in the son, that he is the resurrection and the life. He who is the son is life. In times when you are afraid, that's the time to trust in Jesus and believe in, in him to know that indeed resurrection will come one day. Death is not the final chapter. Resurrection is the final chapter. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Do you believe? This is the question to all of us according to our memory verse for today. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven above, Thank you so much for the assurance that there's going to be one day a resurrection of those who believe in Jesus. Help us today to make the right decision to choose Jesus Christ. That one day when he shall come, the dead in Christ will resurrect. And those who are alive, we all meet up in the air. May the Lord bless us today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.